Welcome to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yael Keown, mum, FIFO wife, MBA, coffee lover, survivor superfan, and creator of The Email Experience. In Easy Email Marketing, you'll benefit from my nearly 20 years experience where I'll be teaching you all the tips, tricks, and insider info on how to create feel-good, non-spammy experiences for your subscribers. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to the Easy Email Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Yael Keown, and today's episode is a little bit of fun. So instead of talking big strategy and big ideas, I wanted to talk to you about the small things instead. These are the quick hacks that you can add to your email marketing that can make a huge difference to your bottom line. So think of these as small tweaks, takes like 20 minutes or less, but they can really supercharge what you've already put your time and energy in setting up. But before we get stuck in, I did want to let you know about a free live training I have coming up in a couple of weeks called Beyond Newsletters. This masterclass is all about forgetting what you think you know about email marketing and instead showing you what it's really all about. So you will learn simple strategies. Today's all about simple, simple strategies that will supercharge your email marketing without needing to send a newsletter ever again, Um, because we get so stuck in this framework that that's what email marketing is all about. And it is not. And hopefully as a regular listener to this podcast, you know that. But if you need reminding and or if you want those specific strategies and you want to see how you can really leverage email marketing in a simple, automated super sexy way, Um, make sure to register for this masterclass. It's happening Wednesday, 15th of March. Yes, there will be a limited time replay, but only to people who sign up. So make sure to register now at yalekeown.com forward slash beyond. And the sooner the better, because there will be a few surprises going out between now and then as well. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Okay. With that being said, let's get stuck in today's episode. And I've got seven email marketing hacks I want to share with you. The first one is to make your lead magnet or your opt-in incentive super prominent. Too often, I see people just putting it in the footer of their website or putting it as a pop-up and that people exit out of and then they don't see again for 30 days without any alternative option to sign up. Plus, I might go to your social media account and see nothing anywhere. Like see absolutely no mention of your lead magnet, except for when you first announced it many moons ago. So the hack here is to make it more prominent and add it in a few places. And there's a few key strategic places that you can do this um, that still don't feel full too full on. So the first place is your Facebook banner, your banner image, include a mention of your freebie and link that learn more button to your lead page or your sign up page. Make it also your pinned post at the top of your Facebook feed on your Facebook page. Also, make sure, of course, your Instagram bio mentions it and your link in your bio goes to that lead magnet or at least your link tree or whatever you use has the lead magnet right up the top, um, front and center. Also, now we have pin posts on Instagram, make use of it and have at least one of those pin posts dedicated to this freebie. So anytime someone sees your profile, they see that they can download this free gift from you. Or bonus points, if lead um, list growth is a real big priority for you at the moment, make it the whole banner. Like the first three make uh, pin posts, make it a whole banner across the top so it really stands out. And of course, make sure to mention it in your posts regularly. So it's as simple as when you share a tip that's similar to what your lead magnet is about, just, you know, mention at the end. If you want more like this, make sure to get this, make sure to sign up. Um, Simple things like that can make a huge difference. And it's just about getting in the habit of it. So people are aware that this thing exists because people might have even seen it that one time, but then they go, oh, they might just not have that the time in that moment or they get distracted by something else so they don't sign up but getting these reminders is like oh yeah I wanted to do that I really wanted to grab that other places like on your website you know have one of those floating bars at the, on your website that appears at the top if you don't have that native to your theme you could use something like hello bar to make that possible and just make it sure like your home page like it's really prominent on your home page as well so whether it's in your you know big banner or it's just this big strip that's um you know somewhere not too far down on that homepage and make it easy for people to find and get their hands on it and make sure you're absolutely positioning it in a way that makes it just sound like oh, irresistible. So sometimes it's just a matter of tweaks of a couple of words. So making it more, your lead magnet more prominent, hack number one. 
Hack number two is to add a third question at sign up. So what I mean by this is normally we have either like an email address or um, first name as fields for people to um, to register. But I actually have found that adding a third question can be really, really powerful and really, really helpful. Now, some people are concerned about this because they think that if they have to ask a third question, that people aren't going to complete the details because it takes too long. But I know OmniSend actually did a study on this and found that even that three fields was actually the magic number for people to sign up. So more than just typing in the email address, like I guess it's something in that mindset about it shows something you know, personal that you're actually putting thought into this. So obviously we don't want to waste this third field on just asking for someone's last name. Instead, I recommend choosing either them, asking them to either categorize themselves or identify a stage. So category, uh, for example, with my, with you guys, I normally ask which type of business you have. Do you have an e-commerce business, a service-based business or a digital, do you offer digital products? So having those three categories means I know fantastic information, but it also helps um, you guys, you can see that, oh, okay, it's for me. They can self-identify and go, okay, Yale actually has stuff for me because there's a box that says my name. The other type is stage. So this is more where you might say you're at the beginning, intermediate or advanced stage. You might not use those words exactly. You might say, again, like, I'm just starting out or you know, I've got a few things set up, but uh, you know, I'm not really in the habit of emailing yet. Or um, it's just about, again, helping them myself identify and go, oh, yep, again, this is for me. Um, similarly, with stage is something around age. So again, so this is similar if you deal with um, mothers of kids and you, you, just, you sell age appropriate products or services, you might ask, you know, what age are your kids? Um, so again, that helps identify a stage and go again, they say, okay, yeah, this is for me. So it can entice them to sign up. But it also, of course, provides you with great market research data. So you can know, okay, well, how much of my audience is this stage? How much is this stage? And you can begin to think about tailoring your content. You can also therefore create segments super easily by saying, okay, well, we know, based on this field, I know this many people fit in the e-commerce category. So if you send out an email, if I send out an email that's really super specific to e-commerce, I can just send it to those people or at least just send it to people who have not said there's something else. So you can use this data or not, um, but having that information makes a huge impact. And bonus points, you can do a few simple things like in the um, welcome series. So based on this answer, you can branch off at least maybe even just one email in that welcome series, which is tailored to each specific category. So it's providing that information, gives them something useful and it's automated. So it's not doesn't mean that every campaign you send has to be catered to each group and you end up with multiple groups. We just want to provide this opportunity to show, you know what, I'm here to show up and help you. And it can really, really just add that extra level of information and extra power with your marketing, even if you don't use it just yet. The third hack is what I call using the PS. So the P, I've had a whole episode around this, but I think it's worth just mentioning here um, that the PS is a huge part of your email real estate. So quite often what you will find is when people open to re scan an email, they will, of course, read the subject line first. They might um, read that opening text, but often people just skip to the end because they're like, you know what, I just want to know what the point is of this email. Or, you know, they've read the whole email, but the PS kind of stands out on its own. So absolutely use the PS as a space to give a call to action. So you can use it to reiterate the point of the email, but I love to use it as a sales call to action because one of the things um, that you should know that I teach is obviously a lot of your emails should be about providing value. It should be about an insight or a tip or something motivational or a story. And that might not exactly ask them to do something. But I'm sure you have something that you want to sell more of. And what we can do is use this PS space just to put the space in that email so they know how they can work with you. So it could be PS, if you want to book a call, you can do that here. Or if you want to get on the wait list for my program, you can do that here. Or it could be like a banner image, like so having like some sort of footer image in there, which promotes your program or your product. Or you could have some featured products here. It could just be as simple as having a shop now 
button. But it gives them, it makes it easy for them, right? Because it's all within the email. They don't need to think, oh, this person is helpful. Mm, How do I work with them? Okay, now I have to go to my browser and type in their address and I need to find the exact page on their website that tells me how I can work with them. Instead, it's just a simple going, oh, yes, there's a link. I can click it. But it's not pushy. It's not salesy. It's not making your email be all about buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. But it's giving those who are ready the option. And it is also planting the seed for people who might not be ready yet, but they know, okay, yep. That's there. I know that there's a way I can work with them because we need to make this obvious. We assume people like it's because it's on our website that people can find it. No, we need to make it easy. And the PS is a powerful place to do this. Hack number four is to add easy opportunities for clicks or replies. You might sense a theme here. We just want to make things as easy for your subscribers as possible. And also we want to be strategic about this. So when it comes to getting, um, you know, your emails delivered to inboxes, encouraging people to open your emails and also just overall deliverability and sender reputation and just developing this proactive relationship with your subscribers. So it's not a passive, it's like it's an action-based relationship that we want to include lots of opportunities in your emails for your subscribers to engage with you. One of the easiest ways to do this is asking for them to click things. Now, obviously, saying click here to buy or click here to book throughout all your emails, not many people are going to do that. But what they will click on is click to watch this thing or click to download this free gift or this worksheet, click to view this social media post that's going off or this reel. You can can make it really, really intriguing and say, you know, if you want to watch the thing that everyone's talking about. You could round up different resources from other places on the internet. It doesn't even have to be your thing. Um, Click to read a blog post. Click to vote on options. So giving them opportunities to do a click and it takes them to something amazing or gives them something free or it literally just, you know, doesn't really take them anywhere of consequence, but it gets information. Similar to this is asking a specific question. So getting replies is gold dust for that deliverability. And again, of course, when someone replies to email, you can reply back and you can start a conversation with them and again, get to know them on a deeper level and perhaps even get them to a stage where you know you warm them up and they they are interested in buying from you. But you want to ask specific questions. So if you provide some great article, like for example, in this one, I'm providing hacks. Maybe I would ask a question like, what's your favorite hack? Um, from this or which one are you going to implement or um, if you could add a hack what would it be so specific questions but it gets replies it gets conversation started but it also just increases those opportunities for engagement and gets things moving and it's just as simple as adding like a single line to the emails you are already sending hack number five is to identify and follow up leads It's amazing to me how many people have these huge lists, or even if you don't have a huge list, but it's amazing, especially for those who have these larger lists and are just like sending things out to the void and going, you know, I hope people click or to buy this thing and, um, or sent, you know, doing launches and saying, you know what, people, just nobody's buying, nobody's doing anything, but are they proactively using this data? to do some personal sales or doing some outreach. So if someone clicks on a link to buy something from you, then it's highly likely they are interested in that thing and they go from being um, a warm lead to a hot lead. So we can identify use email marketing strategically to help us narrow down, you know, Funnel out those people that we think, you know, they're just, you know, the window shoppers, they're just the freebie seekers, they're whatever, and just identify of those 100 people, which 10 or which five, which one, it doesn't matter, which one is actually clicking and looking and engaging. And it's as simple as looking at your report after you send an important campaign and going, who clicked the link? Or creating a segment saying, who clicked the link? So check during, uh, this is something that I believe is essential to check anytime you're doing some sort of promotion, like a launch, and then personally reaching out to these people. 
Um, if you've got ongoing, um, you know, campaigns, if you've got some sort of evergreen set up, you can also do things like create an automation where you get notified anytime someone clicks a certain link. So you get a notification, you go, okay, cool. I can follow up on this person or you can actually do it, automate it. So they get a follow up email. So it could be they checked out a sales page or a services page. They didn't book in, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, then you can send them an automated follow-up email saying, hey, did you have, I saw you check this out. Do you have any questions? Um, so you can do things like that as well. And you can do that either via they clicked a link or if you've got site tracking set up with some providers, you can actually just have it whether they are, um, whether they click through or whether they just happened to cross it from your Instagram, for example. So using email marketing, just as a way to identify your hottest leads and give you a means to follow up and, and get into that small sales conversation without feeling like you need to talk to everyone about everything um, is really, really powerful. Hack number six is to identify clients and customers. I seriously... <laughs> This is one of the, my my um, pain points because this is so easy. I am finding so many people promoting to me repeatedly something I have already purchased. So this isn't for you if you have a large e-commerce store and you've got lots of, um, you know, lots of different products, a huge range of products. But I see this like where people have like a signature program or a single event or a, um, or you know, a service and. I'm still, and they do some sort of promotional activity around it. So there's extra emails. It's not just one in a blue moon, but it's like a number of emails in a week. And they're promoting to me the thing that I just purchased. So, and it's just so simple to filter it out. And what worries me more about this is actually the amount of people that I talk to who don't send sales emails because they worry about this exact thing. Because they worry, oh, okay, I don't want to email people who've already purchased, so I'm just not going to be email anybody. And that is incorrect too, especially when it's so easy to just identify clients and customers and create a segment for them. So all you need to do is figure out, okay, well, how do I know who's bought it? Is it from a cart like Thrivecart or Samcart? Is it through my WooCommerce store? Is it through Calendly or Dubsado or some sort of booking software? Which is the point of purchase? And then how can I communicate that through to my software? Some, A lot of systems have direct integrations. So just literally look up in Google the two software. So Active Campaign and Calendly. Yes, and hint, there is a direct integration for that. So you can just go look up them up, see if they connect directly, and then basically say, okay, they booked an appointment in Calendly, add tag client. It can be as simple as that. Of course, we can take it next level and add, you know, what specific things they purchase. But even at that level, um, it is really, really powerful. Um, or if that doesn't work, likely there will be a Zapier integration. And I know people freak out by Zapier, and but it is really, really simple. And there is a free plan, especially when it's just a two-step thing. So again, it's be like Calend- at books appointment in Calendly, add to group in mail in MailerLite. And then all you need to do is when you're sending out their campaigns, you exclude that group or you exclude that segment of people, or exclude that tag. And all of a sudden, now you're not worried about sending stuff, but also you're not kind of annoying those people who have already purchased and all of a sudden they're still getting more emails. Now, that's not a huge deal, but I just find it personally a little bit frustrating just because I know how easy it is to resolve this. And again, that provides you with data in your system to know who's clients, who's customers, and you can work with it. And finally, hack number seven is review or testimonial requests and automating these. So, of course, this is one of those things that, um, you know, one of those jobs, I hate, I hate this job of trying to follow up and ask for testimonials from people. In fact, I really suck at this. And to be honest, this is the hack I need to implement for myself. So, um, yeah, maybe I need a bit of accountability around this one. Not everyone's perfect. But just having it again, now you know who your clients and customers are, setting it up so that after a period of time, they get an automated email that says, would you be happy to provide a testimonial? Here's an outline. And just having that request going out automatically. Um, with products, you can also set up, they have these ones for review requests. Um, so a couple of weeks after purchase, you can set up and automate that and send them straight to your website, add next to your product, some product reviews. So that is just something that I think is really quick to implement and can just add that layer of, um, you know, reliability and just add that extra sales, um, 
you know, oomph <laughs> by having these testimonials that you haven't had to go actively and go, oh, I need to follow up on these. <laughs> you can have it all automated as well. Okay, so there you have it. That is seven different simple hacks that you can be adding to your email marketing this year. Quick recap. One is to make your lead magnet or opt-in prominent. Two is to add a third question at sign up. Three is use the PS. Four is to add easy opportunities for clicks or replies in your emails. Five is identify and follow up leads. Six is to identify clients and customers. And seven is to automate your review or testimonial requests. I would love to know, yeah, which one you are thinking of implementing. Um, And of course, if there's um, any extra tidbits um, you want to share, let me know. Don't forget to register for the Beyond Newsletters Masterclass happening March 15th. Head to yalekeown.com forward slash beyond. The link will be in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I would love to hear from you what you've enjoyed from this episode or what you want to know more about. So please let me know over on Instagram. I am at Yale Keown, or one word, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Easy Email Marketing. It's an absolute honor that you chose to listen. If you love this episode, then it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review so that others can find this podcast and make their email marketing easy too. Finally, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Until next time, have an awesome day and make sure to keep showing up and serving in those inboxes.